So now, as we are entering the second half of our dating, we must say goodbye to three of these men who have charged me and have won me over and they are just great genuine human beings with all their quirks on display and they don't really care and they treat their children so nicely and it's gonna be this is a very tough decision for me but I must do what I feel like is best going forward. I will now hand out four roses, each of them representing my continued love and affection for you. And I would like to continue seeing you. But the, for the rest of you, your, your time on the Dad Bachelor <laughs> is over. So let me start with one that might not come as much of a surprise. He's been a very close friend for quite some time. We've been through everything together. Even some weird shit in college. And so, because of that, because I love his bod, I'm gonna go with Craig. I'm gonna give a rose to Craig. Next, you know, this next person, we don't always see eye to eye. But I think what drives us closer together more than anything is our competitive spirit. And that is why I give my next rose to Brian. You know, I'm getting misty. This is tough. One thing that is very important to me in my life is that we learn from one another. You know, we learn about each other's experiences. And we just learn about life as a whole. And our life is just one learning journey. And no one knows that better than Hugo. You have my next one. Now, my final rose. This came down to who I think adopts, adapts to me as a human being uh, the most, and who may not, you know, who's not, you know, saying, who's not, you know, with someone that's actually married to someone. I mean, why the fuck are you in this competition if you're. You know, just, just I'm just putting that out there. So, the person that I feel is the next best option to me, and someone who I want to get to know more, as long as they don't give me a fucking B again, is Matt. As for the rest of you, Damien, your Victorian attitude to the to life is as amazing as it can be is is in the way that you handle your son's you know many many flaws uh, is very applicable but I cannot give you a rose Joseph you're married we already covered that and I, I think you're a great human being but you're, you're married what's your signal then call me I mean I'm down Robert, you suck. I mean, I, I'm not even. I can't even just play out the nice voice. Like, you, you, you just, you're just not a nice guy, and you're just not. You're just not my type. You know, maybe deep down you have some kind of charm to you, but you just, you, you're kind of too much of a bad boy to me. All right. And that is why we will continue Dream Daddy with these four men next. Hey 
Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Chris, and welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that intro. Welcome back to another episode of Dream Daddy. I, uh, you know, I thought, you know, we have to narrow it down, and uh, I felt like, why, why just, you know, why, why, I just say it, you know, um, why not just come out with it? Um, you know, why not, let's make it a whole production. You know, in the beginning, I felt like I did. I hope I I, I served this judge justice. I hope. I hope. We'll see. Um, but anyways, guys, uh, welcome. Uh, so we are about to start our second dates, and now technically I can date all of them. Uh, but I, I don't know. I felt like it would be better just to narrow it down, kind of get some, you know, get, focus on the guys that I, I truly like. And it's not like I don't like the other three. I love Joseph. I think Damien's pretty cool. I mean, Robert's, I guess, the exception. But, um, I just think the other four are, I guess, who I would choose between all of them. Who I would go for, I guess, in this situation. Um, yeah, I, I think... Yeah, I, I think it, it was tough. I, I think it came down for me between Matt. Um, I, no, Matt was pretty solid. I kind of was playing up the whole grade thing. I think it came down to Brian uh, and Damien because I real I did feel like Joseph since he was married that I, I I just could not go into that area. But it, was, it was tough between Brian and Damien. I know that Damien probably. It would be, he'd be much more likable, I think, than Brian. But I feel like Brian, he has a soft spot in there. And I hope, I'm hoping to crack into that. You know, and I have a thing for bears, okay? Come on. <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right. Anyways, uh, Craig, let's go. Um, so we don't need to reach his bio again. This is going to be second date. I, now to this point, I'll be completely honest with you. I have no freaking idea what's about to happen. No idea. I have none whatsoever, and I'm actually very happy about that because I get to experience things for the first time with you guys. You know, uh, I, I'm very, I'm very, very, very much looking forward to this right now. I forgot that this loading screen takes forever. When, when you first boot up the game, it's like it takes, it takes a while to really get into it. Um, all right, here we go. I really wanted to get some good quality time in with Craig. The last time we hung out, he was so busy with the kids and fending off flirting moms that I feel like we, were, we barely talked. Ever since the first time we hung out, I've been trying to get up a little early for, for runs. I don't think I'm, I'm going to be as embarrassing as last time. Maybe I'll even be able to catch up with him now. And type out a message for, to him on that book. Hey man, been training on my, my run game recently. Ready for round two? Craig responds almost immediately. Dude, of course, emojis. <laughs> I uh, I don't know why he didn't just send an emoji rather than type. <laughs> Another message pops up into my inbox from Craig. Let's meet up early tomorrow morning for my favorite morning activity, brunch. <laughs> type back. Brunch? What's that? You run and then you get brunch. Right. Okay, fair enough. Craig and I agree to a time to meet in the morning. I have a chance to spend the evening hanging out with Amanda. So, we're doing pizza tonight? Again? Can't we do, like, a salad night? Ah. I would never fucking say that. Dad, are you on a health kick? I... Not yet. I formed the committee to examine the possibility of being on a health kick. They haven't returned with their findings. Oh, Dad, if you go on a health kick, then I'm, I have to go on a health kick by virtue of being under the same roof as you. I don't know if I can have the constitution for that. Uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. You're good. I, I'll, I'll force, I'll force feed you junk food, and then you know you'll, you'll die in your early thirties, and you'll be fine. <laughs> Sorry, getting really good dark. The committee is a, a smoke screen. Even if the policies change on paper things will keep going the way that they always have. City politics, you know how it goes. Hot diggity dog, in that case. And it picks up the phone and punches a few buttons with glee. Yeah! Hi, yes, can I get an extra large pizza with chicken bacon, extra cheese and tomatoes, and a couple couple of the garlic sauce cups? That's my girl. From now on, though, how about we try and limit this to four times a week? Amanda hangs out. 
Rico says, hey. <laughs> if we get slivery, we plop down on the couch to eat some za. Uh. Just be careful, running in a gate running is a gateway drug. It's a slippery slope, Dad. First you go on a couple light drop jobs before you know it, it you're converting the garbage into a home gym and renewing your garage your garage into a home gym and renewing your subscription to some sort of weekly com com kombucha delivery service. Question. Shoot. What's kombucha? Okay, so you are too far gone yet. Huh. I'm just giving you a hard time, Pops. I'm really happy you're running more and Kurt caring about your health. I want to keep you around for as long as possible. Thanks, kiddo. Speaking of which, I'm running with Craig tomorrow. Ah. You gotta be able to keep keep up with him? Hey. Probably not. <laughs> we don't have any more pizza, of course. Then it is probably healthy in the name of carbo loading. I call a night early so that I'm ready for tomorrow. When I first started running in the mornings, it was pretty hellish. Now that I'm a few sessions in, it admittedly has become a little bit easier despite it always ending in me dry heaving over a trash can. Is that what the runner's high is? Just dry heaving? I laced up my, my tennis shoes, throw on a t-shirt from a writer's summit I went to 20 years ago, and hit him. So he's a writer! He's a writer! I feel like to this point we haven't even heard that. That's... You know what then? That's fair. Because I'm a writer too. I enjoy writing. That's that's very cool that he is a writer. I went to 20 years ago. Head on the door at Moderate Jock. Craig is already outside when, uh, with River strapped to his hey. chest. He's dressed head to toe in color co coordinated running gear. Wow, I look like a total schlub next to get this guy. He's not changed his fucking outfit. <laughs> Just saying, they kind of keep their mamas. Hey, bro! Morning, Craig. Are you gonna be running with us? Best as she can. We're, ta we're taking it to the limit, aren't we, kiddo? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know what that means. Craig hands her a stuffed toy, which makes her smile ear to ear. Oh. That's all the comp Capybara. Uh, some, sometimes it's the only thing that'll get her to stop crying. Oh, I've been there. When I had a stuffed panda that she carried around everywhere, she she would have a tantrum if, if we ever tried to wash it. It was gross. So you've been you've been running lately? Every morning for 30 minutes. Basically an elite I'm basically an elite athlete at this point. <laughs> ha! Well, I'll try and keep up. So where are we headed? Oh. I was thinking that we could get, could do a couple laps around the park. Okay, that seems reasonable. Oh. Then we'll do some hill climbs on, up a slope. Uh, okay, I'll probably handle that. Hmm. And then we'll close it off by doing some wilderness survival hike running to increase our agility. I'm stunningly struck with the overwhelming need to crawl back into hmm. bed. That sound okay to you? I usually like to throw some timed murder sprints in there, but I'll go easy on you since you're a beginner. That sounds like something I'll be able to physically do. Dude! Uh, great! Let's get started! Oh. Greg and I finally arrive at the park. A few, a few other lone joggers make their way around the perimeter. The river waves enthusiastically at everyone we pass. It's a lot more peaceful in the mornings, aside from, you know, birds chirping and river gurgling away in the stroller. It's pretty quiet. Alright, good warm up. That was the warm up. Hey! Let's start the show. Bro! But wait. Craig reaches into his bag and tosses me a water bottle. I fumble it, but thankfully don't drop oh. it. You gotta hydrate, bro. I take a long drink from the water bottle and feel re 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 reinvigorated. Man, I don't drink, drink enough water. <laughs> Coffee, jeez. Uh, hey. Look down and pick up Arnold, River's toy, and hand it back to her. Let's drop this. Oh. Thanks for looking out, bro. Hey. You ready? Uh, yeah, let's let's hmm. go. This is gonna end poorly. We finally finish our our however many tenth tenth lap around the park, but breathing heavily. But I can't believe I actually didn't lose Craig. He's even breathing heavily too, which makes me feel a little bit better. I look down my shirt and knows that I'm drenched in sweat. Huh. Almost looks like a frowny face. <laughs> Get it? Cause nipples. <laughs> Uh, that's one. What? Hey! I'm just kidding. Good hustle out there. I'm really impressed. You're way better than the last time I launched you off a treadmill. 
Yeah, man, you really pushed me to, the, to my limit just now. I can't believe I held on. Sometimes you just need somewhere, someone there with you to push you to do your absolute best. I'm glad I could be that guy, bro. <laughs> Who's ready for hill climbs? Oh. There's my little cheerleader. Chris, you ready? Ugh. 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 <laughs> uh, I'll do ugh. This one's the log. You bet. <laughs> Craig, Craig takes me to to a separate portion of the park where the, where there's a steep hill that seems to be go seems to go up forever. I strain my eyes to see some other joggers at the top. So what do we do now? Nice. We not we run up that thing. That looks like a lot. Hmm. Chris, there's two things you need to know about this hill. One. Don't stop running till you get to the top. And two, I point to the top of the hill. Hey, that's not the top. Ah, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna try to be nice, but I'm really trying this right now. Let's do this. Oh. <laughs> I finally reached the top of the hill after making my way past what I originally thought was the top of the hill. What's now? I had Joe over onto my knees and gasped for air. My, uh, my lungs are like daggers poking my ribs. I can feel my heart in my ears. <sighs> Oh, she's making it. She's making it both. I'm gonna, you know, spill over my desk here. Uh, River, I'm having a moment. Or should I be out of breath here? River, I'm having a moment. Please. Who, boy? Craig looks like he's taking a beating as well. Huh? So he is human. Mm -hmm. Chris, put your arm on on your head and stretch out your elbows. I'll help you breathe better. Do as Craig says. Feels a little better, but I'm still in agony. Hmm. And here, Craig tells me the water bottle again. I had your like my life depends on it. <sighs> Thanks, dude. Dude, <sighs> phenomenal work. You feel that lightness in your head? That's the runner's high. Oh, that's it. I thought I, I was just, you know, dying. Hmm. Want to take it slow for a bit? I would like that very much. Thanks. As, as we're catching our breath, River starts crying. Oh. What's wrong, Sweet Pea? Do you, do you, or, or what's wrong, Sweet Pea? Do you want to play with Arnold? Craig looks around us. Nice! Oh boy, man down. I think we lost Arnold. River keeps wailing. Dude! I've abandoned my child. It's a toy. We gotta find him, dude. Uh, it should be simple, right? We just gotta retrace our steps. I remember at last having it down at the bottom of the hill. Okay, so I got it. I'm probably gonna have to get ready for a mini game of some sort. Craig and I jog down the passage high and low for the stuff Capybara, which Craig takes the time to explain to me is a large rodent native to South America. We get to the place where River might have dropped it, but still there's nowhere to be found. Looks like we've got a mystery on our hands. We have to get to the bottom of this. I suspect foul play. Looks like this is a prime case for world-renowned detective maniac. Dude, it's time for bro adventure. Proventure! <laughs> we high five and decided to jog back to the park to see if we could find oh. anything. So it looks like there's a couple more places to check and some bros around here that we that we could integrate. That sounds good. Hey! Wait, who's good cop and who's bad cop? I think about it for a second. Well, I think that with your stature and overall resilience, you would make an intimidating bad cop. But on the other hand, you do have an adorable baby strapped to your chest, so that softens the edge a bit. All valid points. I think you would make a good, a great good cop because of your co cognitive attitude and well, willingness to try the new things. But then again, I've seen how you get when, when they, there are too many commercial breaks during a show. So you have the potential to be a scary bad cop. <laughs> I don't want to watch, you have to watch me hell in three minute segments with five minute commercials in between. And they're loud. The commercials are too loud. I just want to watch my shows in peace without people yelling at me to buy weapon fluid and stuff. <laughs> Hey! Guess important. <laughs> Alright, let's play Batman mm -hmm. moment by moment. Smart. Oh. So, we're too pro protective. Uh, let's see. Go to the playground, go to the field, go to the woods. Uh, la la. Um. Let's go to the field. Wander out to a grassy field at the center of the park. There's a whole lot to see, but there are a few figures camped out on a blanket. The grass could hold a number of secrets. Matt and Carmesita. Looks for clues. 
Tag River. Move to another part of the island. Let's do Mad Carvacy too. Let's talk to Matt, his daughter. Carvacy spots us from across the way, the way in waves. She's sitting down with her dad on a sunny green patch of grass. We jog over. Hey. Uh, hey, dudes. Hey, bro. Uh, similar voices again. God damn it. We just sat down for a picnic. Want some snacks? Mm. Uh, got anything to increase my glycogen re res Got anything to increase my glycogen reserves? Uh, we have apple slices. Mm. Thank you very much, tiny bro, but I should be fine. Hey. Uh, you guys working out? Good day for it. Yeah, my, I'm the picture of health and athleticism as I have my pot belly. <laughs> I hate myself in this, in this game. Uh, good current transition, Chris. Say, you haven't seen a stuffed ca capybara around here anywhere, have you? Uh, hmm. That's a, that's a capybara. It's a large rodent that natives to South America. Wait a second, how do you know what capybara is? You wouldn't have to have hands-on experience with one recently, would you? We learned a lot about capybaras in the fourth grade. I think it's more suspicious that you know what a capybara is. Hey. Oh my god. What if I took Arnold? What if I'm the culprit? I just don't remember. <laughs> Quickly check my body for any Polaroids. I might have kept on my purse to remind me who to trust and who not to trust. <laughs> uh, Memento. Underrated good movie, in my opinion. I saw Memento once and I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I'm glad, I'm glad that, that that was the reference. Nothing. But what if that's what I wanted myself to think? No, Chris, don't let them win. Shake off the thought. I saw a couple of squirrels over there by the tree, though. I don't know if that helps, but if you want to see some cute squirrels, you, you should definitely check it out. Oh. Uh, I don't know how I, why I did that with a question. Uh, thanks for the hot squirrel tip, Carmencita. Mm -hmm. Well, we better keep getting moving. Gotta find the capybara. I, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Capybara. 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 I don't know. Before River here has a breakdown. Hey, yeah. Good luck. Uh, let me get some apples for the road, though. Carvacy hooks me up with some road slices, and we're on our way. We're back to the field. For clues. And take care, uh, check out those squirrels. Let's check out those squirrels. Where did the suspect say the squirrels would be again? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. The tree. Ah! There they are! Carvacy was telling the truth. These are some rad squirrels. Never seems happy. This may have bought us some extra time. We're moving back to the field. Carefully comb through the field of grass and flowers, I can't seem to find much myself. A lot, a couple of ladybugs and a nickel. While I'm looking, Craig calls out to me from across the field. Chris! Oh man! Jump over. Craig is kneeling in the grass and smoking something. I approach my heart in my throat. So I lean over Craig. I see it. This is Arnold's leg. Ugh. I put my hand over River's eyes. No one should have to be subject to this senseless violence. My God, who or what would do oh, this? Man. I don't know. But now I think we might be dealing with something beyond our grasp. I can't look at this anymore. I turn around, trying to wipe the image of the stuffing strewn across the ground from my mind. Oh. We're running out of time. We may already be too late. Bag and tag, let's keep moving. This is like, this is so weird. We went back to the field. Interrogate River. Mm -hmm. Wait, let me try this. It's always the culprit you see, least expect. I got eye up. An eye to eye with River. It still looks like she's on the verge no. of tears. Good cop. Hey, sweetie, sweetie, believe me, nobody wants you to find your cabbie bear more than me. But we need more clues. I think somewhere in that baby brain of yours, you might have something that will lead us to the perp. So what do you say, kiddo? Meh. Nah. Turn to Craig. Okay, nowhere with this witness. Ah, alright. Go to the. I don't think we went to the play playground. It's the thing. Make your way to the outskirts of the park. There are a couple of benches by the dense tree, tree line. It looks like Robert's here all by himself. Oh god. This also seems like the perfect place to look for clues. Look for clues. We might search through the outskirts of the woods, hoping to find anything that might lead us to Ro Arnold. There are a couple of cigarettes and an empty beer can scattered ar ar around the thicket. This is probably the hot spot for edgy teens to hang out at night and say squares and stuff. But it doesn't look like there, there was any recent activity that might be cover bear related. This might be a dead end, partner bro. Alright. I'm Dad Deuce, where we should go. Let's go to the park playground. Make our way over to 
a small playground at the edge of the park. A couple of kids play on the jungle gym, while parents watch on the nearby benches. Over on one of the benches, a spot a familiar face. Uh, look for clues. Craig and I, two grown adults, walk onto the playground, begin examining its meticulous leak for clues. There's no forensic evidence here. No stray capybara hairs, at least. After searching fruitlessly for some time, we look up. All the parents are staring at us. We smile away as we awkwardly slink away. Go back to the bed. Let's interrogate Joseph. Let's see what oh. Joseph's up to. We jog over to Joseph, who seems to be engrossed in his book. Hmm. Joseph! <laughs> Is the other oh. Hey guys, didn't think I'd seen you two out here. Chris, are you exercising? Sure am. You know me, I just love to run and be healthy. That's kind of my whole thing. Uh, what are you reading? <laughs> oh, just a book on knots and ropes time. Oh, Kirk Douglas! Boats, boat ropes. Right. Hmm. I say, you didn't happen to see a stuffed copy bear around huh? here. What's a copy bear? Hmm. It's a large rodent that, that's native to South America. Just think for a second. Oh. Hmm, haven't seen one around. I'll tell the kids to keep an eye out. Your kids are here? Oh. Just looks around. No. They were here a second ago. Must have gone exploring around the park. Do you know where they could have run off to? Yeah, um. <laughs> Their kids, they get into mis mischief, mischief sometimes, but they always come back. Uh, Alright, thanks for the help. Thanks, Joseph. We'll let you, we'll let you get back to your room. To your, uh, sorry. Uh, thanks, Joseph. We'll let you get back to your rope book. <laughs> uh, boat ropes. That's not. That does seem suspicious. Why would anyone want to steal her toy? That's what I mean. All right. Uh, try to calm River down. This is a pretty nice paper. I might as well get a couple swings. Maybe having a little swing might calm River down. Might buy us some more time. You're right. She's about to go nuclear. This might prepare for her possibility. It's not so Sorry, I'm, I'm just rushing through this at this point. Life is cruel and tough, but at least we'll, we'll always have swings. Craig straps River into the baby swing and gives her a gentle push. She giggles. I take a seat on the swing next to her and immediately realize I'm stuck. River seems to love that. River eventually helps me out of the swing and decides to get back to the investigation. Head back to the playground. Ugh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Can I, I head back to the woods? Guy interrogate Robert, he's the only one left. Hey. Mm -hmm. Hey Rob. Don't call me that. Okay. Hi Robert. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Don't call me that either. Um, okay, hey buddy. Oh. What are you up to? Oh. Thinking. This is my thinking bench. Mm -hmm. I have to get a solid two or two to three hours of brooding per per day. Filling mm -hmm. quarters. Have you by any chance seen a small stuffed copy bar around? A copy bar oh. is large road of native to South America, I know. Oh. So have you seen I... one? Stuffed one. Not a real one. That would be weird. Hmm. Be good, go, be good. Let's be good, go. Come on, Robert. The sooner you tell us what you know, the sooner we, we can let you go back to your body. I don't know. Back up time. Robert, if you don't help us, I'm gonna put you in a headlock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Is that a threat or a promise? Oh. Whoa, slow down. Uh, back off. Well, we turn to the roads. Fuck! I started to put the pieces together, or I have an indigestion. We better keep moving. I don't know! I don't know what else to do at this point. I don't... Who else am I... Who am I... Let's see what Joseph's up to. Joseph, do you happen to know where the cars are? Your kids are gonna... Uh, no, uh, wait, no, wait. No, 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 I want to go back. This is this is gonna be a bad grade, yeah. whatever it ends up being hmm. with this one. <laughs> uh... Mischief, you oh. say. I, uh... Wait, am I being integrity right now? Only if you did something wrong. Thanks for your time, Susan. No. Just doing our due diligence, though, oh. Joseph. Our means, our means a lot to me. I mean, you're more than welcome to ask Kristen and Christy. Imagine they have their ears to the ground on all the latest playground drama. It might be somewhere around the woods. Thanks, Joseph. We'll let you go. Ooh, uh, God damn it! Nice. I need to get River home and calm her down. All right. Good luck, bro. Thanks, bro. Ah oh, no! No! We fucked it, man. Ah. Uh. Why? That sucks. How in the world are we supposed to figure that out? Is there a way? Is there? Or is that all pure luck? 
I goofed up way too much. Batman is still asleep. Crack open her door to find her still in the bed, sleepily scrolling through her phone. Morning. Afternoon, actually. Right, how was brunch? Well, we had a good time with the run part, but we didn't make it to the rest of the port manta. Huh? Huh? To brunch. We didn't make it to brunch. Somehow, we lost River's toy, Capybara on our run. Capybara is... Dad, don't patronize me about giant robots, I know. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, we figured out that Joseph's creepy twins had something to do with it, but we never got to the bottom of it. Ah. Oh. Damn, we should have integrity. But I th he made it seem like he did the kids were not... He made it... Yeah. <laughs> No! I won't do over here. Wait! I can do it over. I can. I can. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have an idea. Let's see. Should we go to the playground again? Take it, Joseph. Yeah. Mm hmm? I don't know where Chris yeah. their kids, they're good. Oh, cracker barrels! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's see. Head back to the woods. What? They're not there. Oh, Robert's bench. I'm gonna keep being vaguely threatening until you tell us something useful. I haven't seen anything. Let's do that. Wow. Now what, bro? Joseph said his twins were about around here. Huh. Wait, those creepy kids? Why didn't you tell me that it had something to do with this? Huh, maybe I should have left the good cop box on the pros TV. Yeah, Robert, bro, do you know where they are? Hmm. I do. A lot of people underestimate the sense of, of the mat man with broods. I saw them looking around here a little while ago. Where'd they go? Huh. Ran to the woods. I'd be more be careful though. I don't trust them. But then again, I don't trust mm. anyone. Not even you guys. Mm. Not even that baby. Mm. I, I take that back. You're an old soul kiddo. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for your help, Robert. Oh fuck me. I risk she's louder now. Mm -hmm. No. 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 I fucking refuse. We're loading again. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get this right. I'm getting this right. No, she, no, no, wait. Why is this so out of order? Maybe back to the playground. Look for clues. Oh. Hmm? Yeah, uh, yeah. It says a little suspect. Oh. Uh, no. I... <laughs> Uh, this is another part of the park. Hold back to the woods. We're gonna interrogate Robert. And Dude. Da, 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 da. Hey. Mm. Hey. Oh. Mm. 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 Come on. Is there no way that I could go backwards? How is this possible right now? Like every single scenario that we're in right now is is just bringing us back to an area where we can't go back. It, it, why this game sucks ass? I should have saved. Ah! I'm so angry right now, man. The only way I could see this working is if we can start from the very top, which I know that no one wants to do. But I, uh, I, I really want to get this right. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna fucking accept it at this point. Ugh. I'm so mad. I'm so angry. How in the world? How in the world? I, I just think that it auto saves, so that way you can kind of. I don't know. 
I, I, I figured that it would auto save enough where I could go back to the very start of the day. Or at least where the copy bar of motherfucking whatever the hell it is. <sighs> whatever. I give up. I fucked it up. I ruined it. I ruined it. Yeah. I blew it. I blew my chances at a uh, boy. Mm. Mm. Right, let's see. Mm. So the run went, went well, though? I was a little worried about your endurance. Yeah, I was rough at first, but I ended up being a piece of cake. I actually feel pretty great. My legs give out. I find myself on the floor of the hallway. I'm just gonna hang out here for a while. You take your time getting up. Good for me. Oh, I got a B, though. Alright. I'm pissed, though. Ah, oh, I'm so angry. I wish I got to see that. You know, because I figured, I, I don't know, I just figured you would have that opportunity with this game because it just randomly all the saves. Nope, it kind of just starts right back where you left off. It all saved way too much for me. That sucks. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can feel a faint sound, but I can't quite make out what it is. If I, I get a little closer. Is she? Crying? Oh no. Knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda? The cry immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strained. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. <laughs> oh, Jesus. In the dark, I could see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. Alright. They were locked. Alright. Leave you be. I got in the room and closed the door gently behind me. She immediately starts crying again. Wow. No idea what has her so upset. She seemed totally normal. I feel awful just leaving her to cry. But I also get the feeling that if I tried to do anything else, it would only have made her more upset. I can't stop mentally cycling through all the sorts of awful things she could be dealing with right now. More than anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. Well, after a long night, I have very little sleep. I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Yeah, I know this is a long episode, guys, but just bear with me. I'm just gonna... I just wanna get to the end of this. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's mm -hmm. bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline to, for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She jumps a for frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So... Anything big going on at school today? <sighs> No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster level up and takes her still freezer burnt waffle out before it finishes cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. She's usually short lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. Sit back at the kitchen table, look at the picture of Amanda I hang, I, and I hanging on a wall. In it, in it, I'm teaching her how to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her before she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing even happened. I was giving it a little bit of thought, thought. and decided that if I forced her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk into the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline for her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin? What? Can you, uh, can you come here for a second? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. Thought, thought, thought. 
just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know that something's wrong, and I, I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just... Whatever it is, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Oh. Honey, you know I'm a bad with my words, so I was, I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting has set up set by now. Ta-da! Dad... Sorry you're sad, but I support you 100%. Oh, oh, I'm so cute. <laughs> oh, I, I, that made me teary-eyed just now. I, I, I would, I will absolutely do that for my children one day. If I ever have children, I, if I ever see them sad and they're not talking about it, I'm making them a fucking cake. <laughs> Or, or if they don't like cake, I'll, I'll make them ice cream. But I'm making sure that something to that message is on there somewhere. Oh, that's adorable. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad. And he, he had to start over. And <laughs> this is beautiful. And strawberry. And it gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serves up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing... I know I've been really weird lately, and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I, I, I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Uh. I guess you should start from the top. So you know how MRR is going to that fancy art school in California, right? MR... Uh, the best friend. The other one. Um... Their best friend? Yeah. You got it! Wow, proud of you. Hmm. Anyway, ever since you got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? She's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosa, Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F. So the same night, they all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB file. Oh, that's fucked up. Up, yikes. Oh. Ooh. So, another important piece of information is, uh, God, this is barely. I, um, have a crush on Noah, and, uh, that's a thing. <laughs> what? Whoa, I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay, yeah, please. You're a bad liar. So are you. <laughs> I learned from the worst. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, so the only person I told about the crash was MRR, and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I just kept quiet and kept going about my business. And Amanda sighs. And then one day, I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall. And after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them have ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy. Like, simultaneously. So I, so I tell him, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out chips, and I really, really wanted nachos. Yeah, that's totally understandable. Nachos are important. So I go to the mall anyway, I go to the food court, and who do I see there? But Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah. All hanging out together and eating nachos without me. Ooh, I'm about to, I, I'm about to torpedo these fuckers. <laughs> what? It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. Yes, I know. So I storm over there, and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt, because of course she does. And Emma R just, like, glares at me. Grace. Grace. Nothing's coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... Um... Gossipy one, boring one. Gossipy one? I know! Grace is the one nobody really likes. Or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will ever will say anything. I'm just like, you guys suck. 
which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but I was very angry and very embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left, without nachos, my I add, which only further contributed to this shitty day, and immediately dropped a super long text to the group chat asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to MR, asking how long the Noah thing's been going on, and... Sorry, I know there's a lot you still following? Um... What did MR say? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. MR says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. My pulls out her phone and reads, word for word, a dreariest long string of text mm -hmm. messages. Can you believe that? I cannot... I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. Uh. They are dating in secret for, like, months! So I told her that she's been really terrible friend, and she's like, Well, if you think I'm so terrible, then you just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And she left me on read. And then... Wait, left me on read? What's that? Oh, like... She saw my message and didn't reply, and I know because they're read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just gonna nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to MP about how mad I am because she's at least being kind and reasonable, and I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody <laughs> and stuff, and then, out of nowhere, Noah texts me, he's like, how can you say that to me? And I'm saying, like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. Wow. Alright, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds Aww. bad. There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. That's... I don't know. That's really fucked. Like, that's how evil teenagers are. And, I, I, and trust me, I, I, I never... I don't think I've ever gotten to that level of petty in, in my high school days. Uh, or, I, I've... All right, so I had I had a friend group that I had I developed senior year because like three years earlier, like I had my friends, but I never really like I, I didn't really give a shit about them. I I should have probably, um, but I just didn't really like, you know, I, I was not in like that friend group. And then senior year, I was in a friend group, and it was just a mess because <laughs> there was always drama. There was just, like we had our nickname for our friend group. It was like all everything was kumbaya in there, and it wasn't. Everyone hated each other deep down. I'm sure. There, like there was there was the friend group, and then there was clicks in the friend group. So it was all just petty teenage bullshit. Um, and uh, now I don't. I barely talk to any of them. <laughs> There's a few that I still keep in touch with, but it's, um, you know, it's tough. Sometimes, you know, when, when it comes to high school and stuff, it's, you don't realize how much bigger the world is once you get out of high school. Like, you think that these are the only people in your world, but it's so much bigger than that. And the most important thing is that you remember that going forward, that, you know, the world is at your disposal. You can meet many, many people with many your same kind of interests, or maybe not. Maybe you have that whole opposite to track thing. But there's so many people out there that you can try to make friends with that you don't feel like high school holds you back on that front. You know, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't know, I guess I'm not like the greatest example of that because I don't really like, I, I still don't really hang out with people too much. Um, I, I, most of that's just caught up in college. Some of it's just not... I don't know, I guess I'm just not a great friend to people. Um, but, you know, and I, sh I, I, I try. But, um, you know, I, I, you know, I, I try, um, I think about, um, I just think about, though, you know, going forward in life. And it's just like, this, we ha there's so many human beings on this planet. There, I'm sure that there's plenty of people out there that, you know, you could be friends with, you know, and so never feel like in high school that, that that's like the, the only group that you'll ever be a part of, because truth be told, you probably, it probably won't be the only group, and it probably is only going to be the first group, you'll probably let a lot of them go, unfortunately, I mean, that's just how, I guess, that, that's how the world works, and that's how I ended up working with my experience, and that's what, you know, this game is kind of emulating as well, it's interesting, so, what can I say? 
Uh, the bottom line is that everyone dropped me. Half of my grades hate, half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Oh, that's that's so rough, man. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I, I, but I, at the same time, with all that being said, I really feel for people like that, where they feel like everyone hates them. Because I feel like I, I, I still do to this day, feel like that with with you know social groups and stuff. But the truth, the truth is that. You know, there, there's always gonna be people out there that are gonna like, that are gonna hate you no matter what. But there's all, there's also gonna be people that like you, and and th that's you have to remember that there's gonna be people that are always gonna be friends with you, uh, or at least uh, that that will be there for you. You know, when you are down, you know, whether that be friends or whether that be family or someone else. You know, there's always gonna be something or someone there for you you're never alone no one is alone and one of my favorite songs from into the woods no one is alone anyways i i'm just going off on a tangent at this point uh i'm just <laughs> i don't know you know it's 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 you know i, I reliving high school through the through this conversation right now it's just kind of like ugh. I don't want to experience it, but I rather I kind of like just talking about my life experience of what I've gone through, because I mean it's probably it's it's a lot of it's just petty and stupid. Like I don't really th I I look back at all that all that and I'm just like it is what it is. I don't really care. It's fine. I'm enjoying my life the way it is right now, and um yeah you know, I'm I'm four I'm almost four years out of it, so I'm like I'm good, you know. So I I'm fine with, with with sharing that stuff uh, about myself because you know why not why not you know don't be i don't want to be uh you know blind or non-transparent whatever that is anyways uh i always expected it from everyone else but uh -huh. emma r has been there since dad died oh that's that's really sucks can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that i and to be fair i've never had something like this this is bullshit this is like <laughs> the people purposely going out of the way i think a lot of the situations that i put myself in were either you know either my own fault or just just in my own mind um i'm not even that mad that she's dating noah i'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long or just other people being idiots i, I don't want to put all my blame on myself <laughs> that sounded bad no i don't i don't blame myself for anything or as much um, I made a stab at the remnants of her cake. Da, da, da. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Man, it looks so dejected. I almost can't take it. What can I possibly say? Oh. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole square tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. Yeah. I, I, you, you don't ever feel bad for feeling the way you do ever, 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 ever. You have an emotion, you feel it in your mind. Yeah, you don't feel bad for it. Except, I guess the only exception would be like if you, you know, you're discriminating people against people. I mean, that, but that's I, I think that's a whole different story. If you're experiencing an emotion, you should not be shamed to have an emotion. That's not. I, no one should shame you for that at all, ever. I guess. Sorry, I'm like stopping a lot of these conversations, but I just like uh, there's a lot on my mind right now. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been, uh, who's been approximately human feelings, uh, approximately human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I ever was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously, I, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. No friends don't do that. Not all friendships last forever. High school sucks. Whew, that's a good one. I mean, those are all good advice. Um... Not all friendships last forever. Uh, yeah, I would say that. But I also think that real friends really wouldn't do that. 
But again, the kids are stupid. And I want I and I I know that the whole thing is high school sucks and we're young and stuff, but it's I, I, I at the same time like I, I don't hate 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 high school. Like it's not the worst place in the world. I still there's so many great memories that I have from high school, so I don't wanna say that. I think not all friendships last forever is better. People are going to come in and out of your life. It's just how it works. Not every friendship is going to last forever, so cherish your friends while you have them. But when it's over, don't dwell so much on the bad stuff. You had some good times with MR, but you guys grew apart. Learn from it and keep moving forward. There's so many new friends to make, and, and they're going to be so much cooler than MR and the rest. Ultimately, I think this, was, this says way more about their character than it does about yours. Because you're amazing. If they can't see that, well, well that's their problem. Da, da, da. I'll keep that in mind. Look down on the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Yeah. Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. Well, good talk. Manny gets up to go go to her room. Before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yes? <laughs> Thank you. You're always welcome. Love you, man. I love you too, Dad. I love you too, Dad. Oh, he actually said it. She's actually said it. Oh, welcome. my God. <laughs> you got that. <laughs> All right, that was the end of a long episode. I'm so sorry, guys. I should not have probably dwelled on personal experience, but I just, I don't know. This game, to me, has both a mixture of this this really fun dating game uh dating simulator but it's, uh, to me this is not like what i think about as a dating simulator it's very much about just learning about these these characters and story development and then i don't know there's a lot that you think about you know i i, I mean earlier on in the series you know i, I talked about you know i i i, I dealt some feelings about like my experience with like relationships which is zero but i don't like i don't know the reason why i bring up personal experience i talk so much about like these these situations because it's just it's just interesting to me and i love talking about it um and i'm not i'm never trying to reach for sympathy or anything i just you know just put it out there you know i because I, I think it's relevant to whatever is happening in the scene but um I don't know, I just love this game because it kind of, it, it doesn't, it's not a full-on dating simulator where it's borderline unrealistic and it's just, it's all about the sexy, sexy characters and everything. It's, it's, it's real. This is real to me, you know, in, in the weird way. It's like, it, it's, it, obviously it's not real life, but it, it, it takes a lot of real elements in there, you know, and, um, you know, it's just, I, I love it. I, I, I really am genuinely enjoying the game. Okay. That was a long ass episode, um, and I thank you all for sticking through to this point. Um, I uh, hope you all enjoyed. Uh, if you've watched to this point, uh, do uh, uh, I don't know comment section down below. Boo boo. I don't know. Just say boo boo at one point. All right. Uh, if you watched to this point, I commend you. All right. Good job. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Be good to one another. Be kind to one another. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.